Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today I'm going to be sharing 10 beginner tips and tricks for your first time playing Coral Island. So let's get started. The first tip, which I believe is an absolute must, is to slow down the in-game time to 50%. In the game options, there's a slider, which you can set to 100%, 50%, or any increment of 10 in between. Your days will last about 20 minutes on the fastest speed and 40 minutes on the slowest. However, I find when I play on stream, I usually get about an hour out of the days when you take into account all of the UIs we interact with, which I'll pause the time. If you prefer the quicker pace, for your play style, I still recommend slowing it down for the first few days at least because the map is absolutely huge and I love it, but you definitely will need the extra time to find your way around until you're used to it. And then you can also comfortably meet all the characters without feeling rushed and having to put aside other tasks while you do so. So that is my recommendation, slow down the time. I don't think you'll regret it one bit. Tip number two is don't be afraid to dash around the island. You can easily do this from day one, simply by pressing the space bar. This mechanic does not consume any stamina, so don't be shy using it to help you speed around town when you're racing after your favorite NPC or trying to make it to Sam's before closing. You can also enable auto sprint or toggle it on and off with the shift key, and that is definitely very helpful as well. Tip number three is to strategically clean up your farm. And trust me, you want to do this early on before it's too late and you wish you had. Clear the east side of your farm toward the south entrance first and then the upper path towards the west exit next. So if you are running home from either of those directions with little time or low stamina, you can dash straight home with no obstacles to block your way. The last thing you want is to be stuck somewhere with not enough stamina to get unstuck. And you also don't want to be passing out when you run out of time at the end of the day just because you could not make it back home in time. So definitely do that as soon as you can so you don't have to worry. Tip number four is to craft a makeshift chest right away and use it to store all of your materials. Things like stone, wood, sap, ore, and trash. Keep your trash, okay? You're gonna need it. Also, prioritize upgrading your bag as soon as you can for 500 coins. This will unlock the ability to toggle between your tool belt and your backpack with the Q and R keys, which is a lifesaver. And it will help you make more money since you can collect more things on your travels to sell. Tip number five is to talk to every NPC in the beginning, even if you don't think you want to. First of all, this will ensure that every character is marked on the map, so if you need to find them in the future, it's easy. But you can also learn a lot from talking to the characters. Tips, tricks, secrets, and more. Take it from me. I learned something about my favorite NPC from one of my least favorite characters. It's totally worth it. Tip number six is important for those of you who are trying to level up your hearts with an NPC. Be sure you're talking with them every day and giving them two gifts per week. However, be sure to check the calendar next to Sam's and take note of when their birthday is. If it is currently the week of your favorite character's birthday, make sure you only give them one gift that week and save the second one for their birthday. Gifting an NPC on their birthday will give you an instant heart, which is amazing. However, you won't be able to gift them on their special day if you've already maxed out your gifts beforehand. Tip number seven is to forage in early game to make money while you explore, chat with the NPCs, and uncover lore. But also, get to farming fairly early on to make some real coin. In early game, before you increase your town rank and unlock new seeds, cauliflower will make you the biggest profit in the spring season at 65 coins of profit per crop. However, it also costs the most up front, so potatoes are a great second choice, earning you 35 coins per potato. I would also recommend planting a little bit of everything in the beginning and keep one of each just in case. Tip number eight is to help you descend through the Forgotten Caverns with your basic pickaxe that you'll have in the early game. Hit the small rocks first as you search for the opening to the next level, which will consume less stamina at one hit per rock for one chance at an opening versus two hits per rock 
for the same one chance. Since finding the opening is random, this method should give you the greatest chance of descending the mines in the five level increments you need to save your progress with the elevator. However, I would also recommend prioritizing collecting any bronze ore you see along the way, which will take three hits, as you will need a significant amount of it in early game. So definitely hit those first before the small rocks when they do appear. Speaking of bronze ore, tip number nine is to upgrade your pickaxe first out of your tools. This will make navigating the mines easier and will help you collect more ore with ease. More ore will help you upgrade the rest of your tools much quicker and will also be necessary for other projects. So definitely upgrade your pickaxe first. Finally, tip number 10 is to go diving early in the day to maximize the amount of time you have to find solar orbs in the ocean. Even try going on a rainy day if you can to skip watering your crops in the morning. You can plan this out by using the weather channel if you want to, or you can just note when there's a rainy day and head for the ocean. When you're diving, kibble will actually bring you out of the ocean at 11 o'clock p.m. on the dot, which cuts the amount of time you would usually have to partake in an activity short by about one to two in-game hours, depending when you usually go to bed. Also with diving, Clearing the trash and finding the orbs can take a significant amount of time depending how your luck is that day. And without sharing any spoilers, there are certain animation sequences and routine game mechanics that will take extra time to get through while you're diving. So you really want to have the full day available. So those were my first 10 beginner tips and tricks for playing Coral Island, but I have many, many more to come. Please do keep in mind that Coral Island is still in early access, so all of these things are subject to change, although I think most of these ones specifically will stick around uh, for the full release, but do just keep that in mind. Be sure to give this video a like if you want to see more of these tips and tricks videos, and as always, I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. I hope you're having so much fun playing this amazing game, and with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Mandy, Meredith, Formotus, Samur, Tansy, Cisco, Tyr, Quinn, Sky, and Whale, my Sunstone members. I love you all and thank you so, so much for your support. It really helps to make all of this possible and means the world to me.